Ultra Performance. A couple of months ago, we talked to Mark Amerigo already about a new project he has, breaking the world record for wind sailing on a surfboat going 121 kilometers per hour on a surfboard, which, which is the equivalent to 75 miles per hour and 65.45 knots. And of course, we now want to hear how is the project going. So hello and welcome, Mark Amerigo. Hello, Nias. Great to talk to you again. Great to thank you very much for taking the time. I know you are, you are doing tests right now, so we are we are now talking to you while you are doing tests outside. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. We are, we are testing new things, new gears, new sails, new boards, and um, yeah, a lot a lot going on, and especially about measurements. You know. Mm -hmm. um, precision measurements uh, about, the, about the board. So that will help us a lot for the next uh, trials in September. Mm -hmm. So um, give me some details, because when I see a surfboard, I consider it reasonably... Ch How do you want to measure what's going on there? Because you don't have that much space on a surfboard to put like measuring equipment on it? Of course not. I mean, it's uh, the equipment that we have on board is really small, but that's what's used on uh, on planes, on small planes and um, and uh, fighters or helicopters. Um, so what we have is like something very compact, but of high precision. So, for example, we know the position in space of the board uh, at less than three centimeters uh, for wow. the height. Um, and for the angles as well, it's uh, like 0 0.03 uh, degrees of precision. So 0 .0 um, degrees, two degrees or 0 0.02? No, point, point zero, point zero 0.02 degrees. Wow. So uh, that's very important for us because we will be able to really analyze the data mm -hmm. of uh, what we are doing these days on these boards. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a, it's part of the, it's part of the project. So when you have when you have these units measuring data, I think especially with the interaction, because you have interaction in any dimension plus the external factors, don't you get a, a vast amount of data? And if so, how do you want to analyze it without sitting there for the next two years only analyzing data? <laughs> you know, the, the great news today that we have data scientists and uh, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. So um, the, the parameters that we are analyzing and measuring uh, are defined and um, I would say um, very precise. It concerns the mechanics, but it concerns also Antoine, the rider, and uh, physiological parameters, and also the wind, the external elements. Um, so we put all these things together, and because of uh, data science, we can do something from it. We can explore and, uh, and find um, very interesting uh, parameters and combination of parameters. Mm. So... When you now say you want to get everything done in three years, and I know that engineers want to go to absolute perfection, how do you prevent that you go from one stage with a prototype, measuring data, analyzing data, getting the next, pro basically you can always say there's always the next better level to achieve. Where do you know when you have the right level to put a product out there to get the attempt to get the world record done? I would say you have milestones. You know, you know that you got a, a three years period, but in between you got milestones. It's about breaking intermediate world records. Uh, in our case, we are really using um, classical boards with fins, but also mm -hmm. uh, foils. And we combine all these uh, solutions to go to the next step will be that will be like the unknown, like the future engine that will be able to go fast and really um, present like almost no drag that's the purpose but in between you have to make decisions and you have to uh, really deliver prototypes and do some very precise testing so mm -hmm. it's about it's about a project leader that has to make the right decision and combine all the resources uh, engage you know mm -hmm. when when you talk about windsurfing you have about 60 years of innovation in the industry however when you look at the when you look at how these um, different surfing kits develop, there's always a common theme where you have a board then you have some sort of sail, you have a fin. Um, how, do you, how do you prevent that you fall into the trap of just trying to optimize something which might already have reached the top level of optimization? Exactly. I mean, you know, uh, when we speak about innovation, most of the time we speak about incremental innovation. Yeah. So you are just almost doing doing almost the same thing as before, just mm. a little bit better. In our case, we start from the blank sheet on one side 
And in the meantime, we are really pushing the limits of what already exists. So that's why we use all, the, all these uh, data measurements. So we really know to understand what's going on today on the, on the surfboard, on the wind surf, on the wind foil, on the wing foil. And all these uh, existing uh, gears will help us in understand, simulate, and really go to the next level. So on one side, we work on the blank sheet. And in the meantime, we are really um, doing the, the best we can to really understand uh, what happens on the water, which is mm -hmm. not the case today. I mean, today mm -hmm. is a lot of uh, experimentation. Um, tomorrow, we, we, we go in the unknown, but we need to have calculation and simulation to go there very precisely. Mm. Um, when we now talk about limits, um, there is a certain aspect which we talked about before we started the interview. It's um, when you go through the water at a certain speed, water changes from um, being liquid to turning into a gas. And let's face it, no matter how hard you try to innovate, you're not going to change that. This is going to happen if you want it or not. So how do you want to get exactly. around a, a – this is a physical border which will never change. At least, at least so far we don't know if we can change it or how. How do you want to deal with – physical limitations which are definitely there no matter how hard you wish they were not it's about i would say cracking the code of the elements mm -hmm. we have to find a place where we can go with a man combined uh, with an engine and the whole new system is like a, um, a kind of a live system so mm -hmm. we need to be like a, um, a bird flying over the water and we need to find and break this code. Um, breaking this code, it's about maybe using some cavitation. That's what you mm -hmm. mentioned with the air, with the gas um, on the um, on the foil or on the fin. And in the meantime, we maybe we need to find another way of um, really gliding on the surface of the water with uh, almost no drag. So uh, the challenge for us is to, on one side, use the strength of a human being, which is quite limited. It's not a boat. Um, and in the meantime, having something that is really limitless in speed and really with no resistance. So we have to find where it can happen. It's like uh, breaking the sound barrier, you know, it's the uh. same kind of challenge, same kind of challenge, because we are really on the surface of the water. Mm. It sounds like a tremendously complex project. So when I look at the team, you can't do it on your own. It can't be just you and the guy who's doing the, the surfing, <laughs> An Anton Albo. I think, what is the size of the team we are talking about? How many people are involved with the development when you look at the whole team? Today, it's, a, it's, today it's about 100 people involved all over wow. the planet and among mm. the best experts, guys from the America's Cup, guys uh, among the best uh, coming from the Formula One, um, people working on big boats and high-speed boats. Um, all, all these people, you know, uh, come together and create this kind of momentum. And that's mm -hmm. because of this energy and almost like 50 companies involved. This energy is, uh, is what you call ultra performance, which is about pushing the limits on the technical side, but in the meantime, creating this momentum between people, you know, the collective power. And that's the strength of the project today. Mm. So when people are now thinking, hmm, this might sound interesting, I know that you have tech partners. Uh, if, 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 if I may ask, maybe someone's listening right now who's interested. Is it still possible for companies to join or support you? Yes, of course. Uh, that's that's the key point. I mean, you can have people involved, engage, um, find sense in what we're doing. In the meantime, uh, it's about um, a kind of revolution to to go to this next level. Uh, but as you know, I mean, this thing goes uh, through sponsorship and um, and finances. It's not mm -hmm. you cannot do that just uh, by, by with technical um, technical help. So yeah, uh, yeah that's that's uh, we just opened it. So we are we are working on it, um, contacting people. So if anybody wants to, to join us, um, yeah, everything is quite open, from uh, the main partner to uh, to this kind of a club uh, with uh, interdisciplines and um, having people working together and also supporters. But the main idea is that this project, Zephyr project, is really um, a showcase. We want to demonstrate how powerful we can be when we work together. And mm. even if people are all over the planet, um, the project started, started 
during the COVID uh, crisis pandemia. And mm. um, so, I mean, all these people work together um, because of this energy of this collective power. And mm. so we want to infuse and have this kind of synergy with uh, our sponsors. So it's a great opportunity for sure <laughs> for, mm. for everybody. One plus one equals three, you know? Yeah. And also I saw when my, when my research is correct, and I, of course, tried to collect data as well, because that's what we do in research. So I can definitely confirm you had at least 100 media releases. I think I got like, I found 120. About, in, by the way, in about two months, with an outreach which goes somewhere in the area between 110 to 130 million contacts. Is, is, is that correct or did I do my research <laughs> yes. wrong? It's quite, it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, overwhelming, but that, that's reality um, on French TV, of course, but also on Rai Uno, on The Guardian. Guardian uh, has, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, we, we reached uh, about 130 and now it's, it's maybe 170 million people uh, mm. that have, have, have heard about Zephyr. Um, and, and people from uh, the water sports and windsurfing and sailing, uh, they call us, uh, you know, the NASA of water sports. So there are big, big expectations and uh, it's a great challenge for sure. Yeah. So what is the timeline now? How do you want to proceed? Because, of course, we will be in contact in the future and keep in contact with this project. But what's your outlook for the next um, next one, two, three years? What, what are the different steps you're now looking at? So. Basically, we have uh, we ran the first tests with uh, new prototypes of sail, of board uh, foils, with uh, um, data uh, acquisition on board. Uh, end of September, so mm -hmm. that's the first key uh, milestone. Um, the purpose is to break some world records on um, some 500 meters distance uh, on foils, um, and then the next step is to uh, really explore a new a new system a new board uh, next year uh, um, 2022 um, the purpose being to step by step go faster and faster to reach to reach these uh, 120 kilometers an hour by end of uh, 22 uh, and 23 should be the year of mm. performing at high speed yeah big challenge many fields involved together and of course, then I have to ask, when you have this technical innovation, will this be uh, publicly available or will you just uh, say this is for us and we we keep it? No, you know, we, we have a, a big heart. <laughs> <Me also. laughs> I and, know you uh, have. This is why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> now, performance is a great thing because it's very exciting and you push the limits for sure. Mm. Uh, but... I mean, it doesn't make sense if uh, if you don't use it for for sailing uh, sports, but also to to help in um, uh, transportation. Um, so, you know, you know, um, by doing this, we we will have to invent and create uh, some patterns, and uh, and so that's for sure. Uh, the purpose is to democratize uh, speed and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So it, it, it will be okay, I guess, that I put your contact data in the show notes of this podcast. And when people want to reach out to you about sponsorship, cooperation, etc., I can put your contact data in here. Of course, Niels, great pleasure. Uh, any question would be most welcome for sure. Perfect. Excellent. So I think these are the perfect final words for this podcast. It's a fascinating project, which as far as I saw in your in, in your product planning and project planning, will also end up having an impact on the 2024 Olympics, because with Pierre Schmidt, someone who's now very young and a young, talented athlete in, in the windsurfing area, he is the 2024 Olympic Games ambassador, and he is involved in your project, right? Absolutely. It's about passing to the next generation and giving the sense of uh, exploration, uh, inventing, uh, going into the unknown. And so Pia is 15 now. And uh, with Antoine, we are uh, his two mentors. So he's a very lucky kid because he can learn so fast. But in the meantime, you know, this kid gives us so key so many key informations because of it's so, sens uh, it's so sensitive uh, when he's sailing. So uh, yeah, he's definitely the future mm. and we're happy to have him on board. Yes. Thank you for mentioning Pierre. He's a great, great kid. Absolutely. Fascinating project. And I'm sure that um, anyone will, great ha will have great value when they, when they join you 
on the journey to success here. So at the end of this podcast, there's only one thing for me left to say. Mark, thank you very much for your Thank time. you, Niels. Thank you for your time as well.